after that whole XZ incident, some people are looking into projects that seem even just a little bit sus, digging way too deep into how they're run, how they're structured, and who is behind them. And today I want to discuss this thread from Dylan Nugent about a project called ZI. I am deep in the rabbit hole of looking into an apparently deeply scammy looking ZSH plug manager called ZI. I think it's an extremely bad idea to use ZShell slash ZI or anything else from the same creators. There's an entire field of red flags here. I am not willing to say it is scammy looking, but I do think by the end of this video, you will think it looks a little bit odd and something's clearly going on, whether it's malicious or just incompetence. Many of you may recall a ZSH plug manager called Zinit. It had been around for a very long time, and then the developer just vanished, deleted the repo, deleted everything, and it was just gone. Since then, there has been a continuation fork to keep the project alive at zdarma-continuum slash zinit. This seems like a perfectly reasonable project, nothing weird about it whatsoever, and nowadays, if you're using zinit, this is what you're going to be downloading from. Now, as for zi, this also seems to be a fork of zinit. I say seems to be because with Zinit Continuum, this forked off the original repo and all of ZD Armor's commits are still there. You can go back and see them. This one didn't do that. It uploaded all of the logic code as a singular commit, basically squashing that original repo down into a single commit, losing all of that historical context. Now, that isn't inherently bad. The person who uploaded this may have had the code, but may not have had the git repo. That's understandable. But that's just the first point. This happened a few weeks after ZD Armor disappeared off the internet and deleted all their repos. That makes it a bit less of a red flag. It might have been the only way to rescue the code. But rescue forks should still acknowledge that they are forks. Now, I disagree with this point, not because I think he's wrong, but because they actually do acknowledge it. Under the acknowledgement section right here, they do say, this organization was created to recover the ZD Armor organization, which was deleted by the owner for an unknown reason. It takes a lot of time and effort for all those who like the project and were depending on it, who don't want to depend on an unreliable source. ZI, formerly known as Z Plugin Z Init, is an open source community project released under the MIT license. It doesn't explicitly use the word fork, but it does acknowledge that it is a continuation project. But do you know what is not normal? Creating an organization with the same name as their deleted GitHub username so that anyone who comes to find the old repos finds the projects that you now control. That being this link right here. So ZD Armor is the original developer of Zinit. This is not their account. This is a GitHub organization created by the owner of this repo. Now... <laughs> This is where it gets extra weird. This person, the developer of ZI, has claimed that they own the Z Shell organization, but not the ZD Armor organization. But a couple of years ago, they got called out, and people noticed a couple of things that are weird about it. How come zshell.pages.dev is in the about section of this ZD Armor repo then? Nowadays, it says zdarmor.github.io. Back then, it linked to the Z Shell pages, which is of the Z Shell organization, the one that he does own, not ZD Armor, the one that he claims he doesn't own. Also, the ZD Armor slash fast syntax highlighting repo listed out z.digitalclouds.dev, which was very, very similar to the email address he provided, digitalclouds.pro. Now, could this be a coincidence? Yes. But since then, the link has been changed, and now I don't think he's even denying it because he's linking to Z Shell. So he says he doesn't own both these repos, but now they're explicitly being linked together. Keep in mind the name that I'm saying, Z Shell. So ZD Armor is the original developer of ZI. This developer made a new organization called ZD Armor after the ZD Armor GitHub account was deleted. All of the repos that were on the ZD Armor GitHub account are now on the organization. 
but also they put their ZI project under the Z Shell organization. This is the first thing that threw me when I stumbled on this. This isn't the official ZSH docs. This isn't the official ZSH organization, but they have documentation hosted at wiki.zshell.dev. You have a website for a ZSH plugin called ZShell. ZShell is the other name that people often call ZSH. And this website is really weird. It's got a nice CSS theme, it's got these nice animations, but if you start paying attention to the actual content, it doesn't make any sense. ZSH start up 50 to 80% faster. Faster than what? Faster than vanilla? No. Faster than other plugin managers? I don't know. It just says it. But instant prompt postponing plugins loading to a moment when the processing of .zshrc file is finished. Does that mean anything? Because I have no idea what that's saying. Or focus on what matters. Statistics about the plugins describing what functions bind keys, completions, and other elements a plugin has set up. What does that have to do with a plugin manager? In a vacuum, you can chalk this up to English as a second language. But remember, points on a graph make a line, and a line goes in a certain direction. The project is a plugin manager for ZSH because that's what Zinit was. Though they don't make it clear here, there's also a minute-long ASCII enema on the page of the installer script running, which shows that they like flashy, colourful outputs, but doesn't really give me any impression of the claimed speed. Why would this be your seer in action? Again, that is not inherently bad. A lot of projects have really bad demonstrations of how they work and really bad explanations. Let's talk about how we install it. Well, it's easy. You just add a curl directly to your ZSHRC. You're sourcing this from the website every time you open the show. This is not a modified image. This is on the website at this very moment. Again, here are the flashy animations. So you don't download it with curl into bash or curl into zsh, which is the way that you install it if you're using the Continuum project. No. Every time you open the shell, you try to re-download it. Again, remember that thing how it said about 50 to 80% faster startup? If your internet hangs, it's going to be the slowest startup ever. If this was the only thing, this by itself would be enough to say, never touch this project. Because there's totally no way that this could go wrong. Maybe they let go of this domain and someone puts another thing here and it downloads a malicious file. Like, no, don't do this. Or what if the developer themselves decide, oh, I'm going to upload a malicious file. Do not ever do this to any developers out there never even think of suggesting this don't worry though it only gets better so that page is a redirect to the init script on github at the moment it sure could change but if you're concerned about that they have verified installation instructions and i can't even just put a hard-coded checksum in your ZSHRC, and if the script you download doesn't match it, refuse to do anything. Why wouldn't you just download the current version? Why constantly re-download it on every shell invocation just to check that it's unchanged? Once again, this is not modified. This is actually on the website right now. By this point, the picture I have is the devs don't know what they're doing. There is a non-malicious explanation for all of this, and indeed, I think a non-malicious explanation is in order. They're cosplaying as open source developers. Actually building a useful project is hard. Grabbing someone else's, throwing up some flashy pages, 
and borrowing credibility from other projects with lookalike names is far easier. I wouldn't trust any code from this site, malicious or not. Do you see the red bar? The video is not over yet. Oh. And that ain't all they cosplay as. They also run a marketing firm <laughs> staffed by generic AI faces. <laughs> I told you, I was deep in this rabbit hole. This is not something I'm 100% willing to commit to, but more on that in just a moment. Let's back up. Who are the devs of ZI? Well, they have a contributors doc, so let's take a look. At first glance, it's a lot of them. But that's only at first glance. You're probably not surprised at this point to learn what isn't on the list. Any mention of ZD Armor or the original project this forked off of. You might also be unsurprised to learn that the vast majority of these contributors have exactly one commit. It's not even clear to me all of them want their profiles under contributors here, though plenty of them seem kind of scammy. So, all of this work by the main developer. Two commits, four commits, one commit, one commit, one commit, one commit. Let's take a look for ourselves because there is a couple more that is not being shown here. This is the main repo. So we have the main developer, then Dependabot. Four, two, one, 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 one. <laughs> here is the wiki. Main by the main person here. Then we have a couple more commits here. Then we keep going further down. Eight, seven, six, six, two, five, one, 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 one. Now, I believe that a lot of these commits are legitimate commits. I don't think there's anything wrong with this. But to say that you have this many contributors, it makes it look like you have an actual team. Now, back up to the AI thing. So, Sullivanus, the main developer, is a busy guy. According to his LinkedIn, he has three jobs, one of which might be his actual job. The other two are scams. Again, I'm not willing to commit to that, including the marketing firm I showed earlier. So the marketing firm is Open Marketing Group. This is their website, and this is obviously AI generated. I don't know what has happened to this person's neck. There's something weird about this person's hair. Everything about this is very strange. I don't know if they generated an AI image and then blurred it themselves or asked it to generate a blurred image. Either way, this is not real. And all of those faces are under the about section. The reason I'm not fully committed to this is there is two separate LinkedIn profiles with the exact same name. One of them mentions Digital Cloud, which we know is linked to the Z Shell developer. The other one has all of these listed here. Now, it's pretty easy to link them together because they both link the same location in the United Kingdom as their location, and I really doubt there are that many people with that name in that area. But there is a chance they are different people. Now, there is a reason why he calls some of these businesses scammy looking. Unshockingly, he's real into AI, by the way. WiseHub offers generative AI to boost your business on their generic marketing page. More customers and increased sales. Every business shares these core goals. The question is, how are you actively working towards achieving them? Our primary aim is to empower your business for success. Clear objectives and tangible results, but the S is a dollar sign. <laughs> Have you ever seen a more core selling website than this right here? Without hard evidence, I'm not willing to say this is for certain AI generated, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was. So what right? This is all probably harmless if it's just business cosplay. After all, I can't imagine anyone actually engaging a marketing firm that uses result dollar sign right on their website. And I have no idea how anyone would find and stumble into these fake businesses. But Salvidus isn't lying about one thing. He's good at SEO. By which I mean, his project is beating zsh.org itself in my search for zshell. So zshell.dev, which is their wiki website for zi, and then zsh.sourceforge.org is right there, and zsh.org is there. This is the repo website, and this is the main website. And this is how I found it. I was searching for some info on zprof 
because what better to do with my weekend than track down the slowness in my prompt? And I came across this benchmarking page, that being on the Z Shell website. At first, I didn't quite register what I was looking at. The site appeared legit, and I wondered if there was an official ZSH wiki now or something. Sure, the writing is bad, but it's a wiki. The reference to ZI made it clear it wasn't for ZSH proper, but it had me for a second. If you're looking up ZSH documentation, this is likely one of the first things you see. But this is not from ZSH and doesn't have anything to do with ZSH. Besides it being a plugin for ZSH, it's not to do with the main project. I can believe that these are script kiddies cosplaying as professionals. I did that when I was a teenager and I don't have a problem with it. It's harmless fun. But let's talk about the logo. So here is a side-by-side -side comparison. They look awfully familiar, don't they? This is the official logo, and this is the logo of Z Shell. Now, a lot of this following segment, Dylan was live posting, and it turns out much of it is actually wrong. The logo of Z Shell is very clearly the main ZSH logo with this slightly tilted and ELL on the end. But it's not as bad as it looks. At first, he thought this was a modified logo to look like the official ZSH logo. It is a modified logo, but not by the Z Shell project. The original designer of the logo, Justin Dorfman, did actually make alternative versions of the now ZSH logo. And this was one of the alternative versions that was available. It didn't end up being officially used, but it is something made by the original designer. And at the time, Justin did upload it to Wikipedia as the logo being used for ZSH. And then when it didn't become the main logo, no one actually changed it over to the logo they are now using. So what seems to have happened here is this Z Shell ZI project wanted to look like ZSH. And they grabbed the logo off of Wikipedia and then used it as their logo. Now, they still shouldn't have done that. But they didn't modify it to make it look like the logo. But that was not the only point. So with everything put together, is this malicious? I'm not really sure. I don't think so? Most things here can be explained by inexperience and the desire to look legit. But there's a lot of weirdness. Even if it's just inexperience, the way it's all set up seems to indicate plagiarism is intentional. They don't want people noticing it's a clone of ZD Armor Zenit. I slightly disagree with that, they do acknowledge it, but they do make use of logos that they shouldn't be using. Many of you have found potential exploits like the re-download after check in the verified init code, but it does seem like there are much easier ways to exploit this position if they wanted to. Then again, maybe they want the deniability of everything looking like inexperience. I don't really know. There are a lot of things about this project that just look kind of weird and give me some really like iffy vibes about it. I wouldn't recommend using it. It might not be malicious, but just the installation method by itself shows they don't know what they are doing. But what do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Have you made use of ZI before and didn't really know about this stuff going on with it? Were you using the actual Continuum Xeonit? Did you use Xeonit in the past and use something else nowadays? I would love to know. Let me know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Somehow I am the first person talking about this. This happened over a week ago.